Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. My name is Seva, and today we are finishing our discussion on autocorrelation tests, that is, how to use various procedures to determine whether there is autocorrelation in your data, whether past observations influence current observations. In past two videos on the topic, we have discussed the Durbin-Watson test, and more recently, the bruges godfrey LM test. So please check these videos out if you feel like it. Today, we are discussing the Q tests and uh, the two variations of Q tests precisely, the box pierce Q test and the Lung box Q test. They are relatively similar in terms of the uh, mathematical interpretation to the bruges godfrey test, but they have a slight twist of their own. So without further ado, uh, let's uh, study the formula and the mathematical interpretation of the Q statistics for the box Pierce test and for the Lung box test. First of all, uh, we still need to determine what is the lag length for those tests. And just as with the bruges godfrey LM test, we can choose any reasonable lag length as we like. So if we suspect that there is autocorrelation of lag uh, 7 or of lag 5, we can uh, code a multiple regression model that will relate the residual to lagged residuals of this particular length and uh, figure out the respective Q statistics. Those Q statistics are concerned with the squared values of uh, autoregressive betas. So the coefficients that represent the relationship between the current residual and the lagged residuals. And we'll need to figure out the squared sum of those uh, coefficients across all lags, weigh them according to some uh, procedure, and then we'll need to apply the chi-squared test to derive the p-values. And uh, here the p-values will be interpretable exactly in the same fashion as in the bruges godfrey test. They will show the probability of there being uh, autocorrelation in residuals. Without further ado, we'll still need to apply the multiple regression for the uh, Q test, either for Lung box or box peers. It will be similar to the multiple regression we used to derive the bruges godfrey test statistics, but here we do not include the initial regresses into the estimation. We'll just regress our uh, current residual onto n lags of residuals. And we have already got everything prepared. We've got our residual in column J, and we've got three residual lags in columns F, G, and H. So we can already apply the auto-regressive model, we need to select five rows and four columns and apply the linest linear estimation function and uh, input our current residuals as the dependent variables and our three lagged residuals as our independent variables. Again, here opinions differ on whether we should fill in missing data with zeros or reduce uh, the number of uh, observations uh, by the respective amount of lags, but uh, it doesn't really matter that much if our sample size is large and the number of lags is comparatively small. So to preserve the comparability of the results to earlier results of the bridge godfrey test, we'll stick with filling in the missing observations with zero for lagged residuals. And we'll input one as we want the constant reported, and we'll input one again because we want the additional statistics to be reported. And we close the brackets and enforce the Linus function with shift control enter. And uh, we see the three uh, numbers that we are most concerned with in the uh, Loom box and box peers autocorrelation tests. Th those are the autoregressive betas, that is beta i. So we've got beta one, beta two, and beta three and they correspond to particular lags. So here, we can already calculate the respective Q statistics 
for the box pairs. It's re really, really simple. We just need to multiply the number of observations, that is 1,258, onto the squared sum of those autoregressive coefficients. That precisely corresponds to this formula as we translate it into the language of Excel. And we get 0 0.2827. The procedure for the loom box test is relatively similar, but here the simple sum squared function would not do as we'll need to divide those squared autoregressive coefficients onto n minus i. That is the total number of observations here 1258 minus the number of a particular lag. To translate this uh, formula into the language of Excel, we first need to um, account for the number of observations. Then we need to multiply it by the number of observations plus two um, here. 2 is just, again, the degrees of freedom adjustment, nothing fancy here. And then we open the brackets and uh, square the respective autoregressive coefficients and divide them by the number of observations minus the number of the lag. So the first lag will be squared and divided by 1258 minus 1. Then we add on the squared uh, autoregressive coefficient for the second lag and divided by the 1258 minus 2, and then we add the autoregressive coefficient for the third lag squared and divided by the 1258 minus 3. Close the brackets, enforce the formula, and get a very similar Q statistics that we got for the box peers test. And now, uh, keeping in mind that those Q statistics follow a chi-squared distribution with the, the number of degrees of freedom equal to the number of lags t, we can convert those q-stats into p-values using the uh, chi-squared dist right-tailed functions, inputting uh, q-stats as axes and uh, inputting three degrees of freedom and copying this formula over here, we get the respective p-values that can be interpreted as the probability that there is no autocorrelation in the data. What we can immediately spot here is that both tests um, signal that it's highly unlikely that autocorrelation is present, as the p-values are remarkably high, and the results are very similar to the chi-squared stat and the chi-squared test p-value for the British Godfrey LM test. That, again, signifies how similar in terms of concept behind them are those two tests. Uh, in terms of uh, performance in terms of which of the two tests is better, box pierce or link box. It has been proven that the Q stat for the link box test, albeit it's uh, much harder to calculate, uh, performs much better in terms of being close in distribution to the actual chi squared function. So it's much more preferable to use this one in actual econometric estimation. As for which of the two tests or even three tests, if we include Durbin Watson, is ultimately better. The opinions again differ. Durbin Watson test is a good first step, first line of defense of your estimation against autocorrelation. So if you check and see that your Durbin Watson stat is very low, very high, then you can be certain that something is wrong. You need to adjust your model by including, for example, autoregressive terms or difference in your data or doing some similar procedure. In terms of bruges Godfrey lm test and uh, Q-test, Q-tests have been uh, more popular in academic research, but it by no means um, devalues the importance and uh, usefulness of the bruges Godfrey tests. So the best practice would include applying the Durbin Watson stat first, and then if you are unsure that your Durbin Watson test captures all of the potential serial correlation of high lags, you need to apply uh, the Bruce Godfrey test and or the Lung Box Q test. And if all three give you pretty same results in terms of the likelihood of autocorrelation, then you can be sure that that's indeed the true result. And uh, that's what is ultimately important in uh, econometrics and hypothesis testing. You need to know and learn how to apply as many tests as you can to be sure that multiple frames of reference give you similar results to increase your confidence in your ultimate result being true. 
and uh, it's all there is for autocorrelation tests and for box pairs and learning box Q statistics. Please leave a like under this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I will be eager to see any suggestions for further videos on business, economics, or finance. As you know, I am closely monitoring the comments and constantly making videos as per your suggestions, so those would be most welcome. And finally, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.